What's up, friends? Uh, yes, thank you for noticing. I do still use a pen and paper from time to time, but today we're not talking about that. We're talking about my process for using Notion with Beehive to both write a daily newsletter and then publish and distribute it. Now, in order to do this successfully so far this year, I'm 60 into this, and I've written a lot more than that, but it's published 60 so far, I got to have some pretty decent systems in place. I hope this is helpful for you. If you're considering starting a newsletter, Beehive is a great place that I have found to do it. There's others as well, but if you like Beehive from what you see here, I do have a link in the description that will help the channel out if you choose to use it uh, to check them out. And uh, you get some discounts from it as well. 30% off, I think, the first three months. Uh, could be 20%. <laughs> go go click the link and find out. Uh, and then same thing with Notion. Notion, uh, I've been kind of up in the air with it for a few years now. I've used it a little bit. I hopped on it early and then hopped off of it, but I've come back around and I actually enjoy using it a great deal, especially for this particular project. And as you can see, I've got some other things that I've been working on with it as well. Uh, but this is the one that I spend the most time in. Now, what does this look like for me? So I'm going to walk through how I write the stuff and why I choose Notion. And then I'm going to walk through how I get it over into and schedule via a template the daily newsletter in Beehive. And then I'll even walk through my process for getting thumbnail images or, or artwork for each of these posts in Canva because I like to have a different image on each of my posts, I just think it looks more professional and a little bit nicer and adds a little touch that is missing from some newsletters. And it's not very difficult to do. So if that interests you, stick around, watch through this whole thing. The way Notion works is that they have different views. So this right here is a status view. I've got a table view where it breaks it up into a table. You can do a Kanban table, Kanban, Kanban, however you say that. You can do a list. Uh, if you want to organize and look at it in this way, there's there's other type of views as well. Whoops, I don't want to create a new one. I just wanted to show you the different types. Yeah, so they got timeline, gallery, list, calendar, board. Here's that uh, board is, is what I was using for the status. Okay, this is the one that I look at the most, though. I just keep things organized by status. The reason that I use Notion for this project is that it's very easy to open up on my phone. And I find that because I'm writing these short little uh, reflections, you know, 200, 300 word daily things, it's just, it feels more natural for me to almost text myself these things on the phone during my quiet time in the morning than coming over here, sitting down at the work desk and typing it out. I also have, speaking of the pen and paper, a lot of them written down in here that it, <laughs> I need to take off of pen and paper and put into uh, the digital world. Be that as it may, Notion also lets you, and this is one reason why I'm using it rather than like Word or uh, Google Docs, it lets you put these uh, properties on each of these posts. And so I want a status property so I can say, hey, this is drafted or published or scheduled or it needs work. Then I've got categories that I've set up just to thematically group these. Over on the website at Beehive, you can see you can actually sort stuff by category. So if I've tagged, you know, these are just tags for your posts. If I've tagged them with these things, we can sort and see what pops up. Then I've got a short answer here for the verse where I just type in the verse and the reference, same thing. Uh, and then the bulk of it is simply the body. You know, this is the main gist of it. You're just writing out a blog post basically. Uh, mine, like I said, are two, 300 words, so they're not long, not super long, short, little bite-sized paragraphs. Okay, then it organizes, so I've got this long draft column where I, I like to stay ahead. I've got 40-some-odd drafts in here, and then I've got the scheduled column. So once I decide that, hey, it's usually over the weekend, but to schedule out a week's worth of meditations, so I'll knock them out all in one fell swoop. I say, hey, let's just drag this one over here and this one over here, so forth and so on. So you can just drag these back and forth between columns. Keeps things organized in my mind the way I like it. Uh, over here on the dashboard of Beehive, we can go to write 
posts. And then you can see what is currently scheduled. I've got stuff scheduled for uh, the next three days up through this pass on the dirt post, which is right here in Notion. And then I've dragged in seven more a moment ago of titles that I like for this coming week. That's what we're gonna do today. All right, so once I've decided that these are the ones that I want to schedule, I'm gonna open this one up and start copying stuff over into our Beehive template. You can click Start Writing, Use Template, and I've set up this template that looks the way I want all of my posts to look. It's got the title up here, it's got the spot for the image, it's got the verse, it's got the meditation, and then I've got a little poll that I've built in, which is pretty cool. I like using Beehive polls so that you can have people click, hey, this was great, this was not, you know, whatever. And then I click Use Template, and it's about right now when I realize I don't have any of the artwork for these images. So we pop over to Canva. I've set up another template, and you do have to, I think you have to have the pro Canva account to do templates. It's worth it. It's a hundred and something a year. Um, I'll leave a link for that in the description below also. I think they're worth it. Um, you can click use template. It pops open this business right here. Later, we're going to uh, resize this because I use the 3000 by 3000 size for the podcast. That's another pro feature. So it makes things just you know, one click instead of uh, a lot of clicks. Here's my process for getting artwork. So I, I come over here in Notion and I look at my titles, come over here to Elements in Canva, and sometimes I'll just go, hey, background gradient. Sometimes this gives me enough to work with because I just want some gradient, something that looks kind of cool, something like that and I'll delete this back layer. Control left bracket will send this to the back and then I'll just resize it like that. And hey, we've got our first one. We're gonna change the title to two days at a time. Get the spacing right and there's our first image. Say we wanted something else. Um, well, let's just get a picture of yelling. These seem a little bit overly dramatic, but then I'll scroll down and, you know, I'll find something like this. I'll do the same thing. I'll delete the background, pop this little sucker in the back, and there we go. Learning to cuss. I think that's an appropriate background for that. And there's that background. Now, sometimes, as you can see, you may want to resize this so we can see this kid's eyes. There we go. Even better. So there's two down. I'm going to speed this up and go through the rest of them. All right, there we go. So we've got some decent images. And also, I should mention that another thing I take advantage of with the Pro Canvas subscription is that not all the images avail are going to be available in the free version. So these, all the ones with crowns on them up here, are Pro images. The one I used from this last one was actually a, a free to use. But anyway, there's plenty of images online. You can go to Unsplash. Let's see, unsplash.com is a great spot for free images. Uh, you can go to pexels.com is a great spot for free images. So there's places you can go to get images um, if that's the holdup. But it, does, it is a nice benefit staying in Canva and not having to go download them and then bring them in to Canva. Okay, so once we've got that, then we'll click share, download, and JPEG. I like the 19 by 20 by 1080 download all of those into a folder on the desktop. I'm gonna hop back into the editor at Beehive while that downloads. So that's gonna save on the desktop. I'm gonna extract that so it's ready to roll for me. And there they are. And I opened it twice. All right, I'm gonna drag that out of the screen. We'll use it here in just a second. Okay, so the first one is two days at a time would be nice. 
And sometimes I'll have a title, subtitle in the, uh, I'll, I'll write them both if I think of something kind of clever, because in Beehive, uh, the title is what you'll see in bold as the subject line, but then you'll also see the subtitle in the uh, email. So for instance, uh, here are some of the recent ones that I've sent and offspring, well, misspelled offspring. Uh, and idols under the sin, that's uh, skin, that's title and subtitle. And then when you open it up, you can see title, subtitle. Okay, back to the editor. So there's title, subtitle, content tags. I've tagged that as discipline. I can add or delete as I see fit when I'm over here. Authors is set up to whatever I have set up. I've only got myself. Guest authors, if you have any, you can add and manage those there. Then in email, I do copy title and subtitle, so that what we just went over will be visible in the email. And there's some advanced options for read online URL. Uh, this by default will lead to the web version of your post. Uh, yeah, they recommend leaving this blank. I recommend leaving that blank because over here, you can actually change the website from this random string to two days at a time. That way, as you can see right here, when I go to a post, let's go to a post right here, it will have that string as the URL, progressperfection.com slash P slash this petty remorse. So it makes it nice and clean and more readable and perhaps better for web scrapers and uh, SEO and stuff. Okay, we're gonna add a thumbnail and right here's where we're gonna use our little folder of images. And you can just drag all these in here to our assets folder. And then that way you don't have to upload them every time. They're just already in there. Two days at a time, we're good to go. They recommend 1200 by 630, but I use the full size and let them size it down in uh, the behind the scenes. Now, speaking of SEO, if you want to change the description, this is what your SEO is going to look like or your search result is going to look like. So if you wanna add something here, I usually just leave this blank. I, I am kind of lazy. This can be updated uh, down the road. So if you want to add something, let's just, let's change this one. Let's look over here in our post. Let's just grab our first sentence. Sometimes I'll do this. I'll grab the first sentence or I'll grab the last sentence. And that way I don't have to think of something clever on the spot. I can just stay in this zone of, of getting all the posts ready. And that's a little bit better of a search result. Okay, then delivery, you can change if you have included segments, uh, but I just, I email this to everybody, my whopping 50 people recipient list right now, and that's all set up. Now, quickly, we're going to upload new image. Here's the second place, and I'm sorry, we're gonna replace from image library. So there's two places that I put the images. I put it in the post itself, and then I put it over here, in the website. And then it's copy and paste. So I grab this, paste that in, grab the reference, paste that in. And I'm not gonna do this right now because you're watching and it would be boring, but I will typically bring this in over here and then I'll read it. Out loud is best, but I at least go through it in my head because I will catch typos and or just bad sentences. And so I always do that. I have a final check when I read from here the podcast version. So that's one advantage of reading this into a podcast recorder is that I, I do an actual out loud final pass and I still will catch, even after I've read it here, some small errors from time to time. So we're gonna pretend that I proofread that. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna say, if we wanna preview it, we can preview what it's gonna look like in the email or on the website, or the mobile version, or the mobile email, okay? We can select a subscriber and preview it as one of the subscribers that I currently have, but it's gonna look the same for everybody because I don't have any subscriber-specific stuff. And we can send a test email if we want. So I can send a test email, I can simulate a subscriber, or I can just send it to myself. I typically will do that uh, if I make some changes to the format or template or whatever. And then finally, we schedule it. So this is going to be scheduled for next Monday, the 4th of March. I schedule all mine for 4.47 uh, or 4.48 a.m. because I'm weird. And then we say review and we publish. Since it's scheduled, 
uh, say you forget something and you say, ah, I meant to do yada, yada. Well, you can come back in here. You can edit the post and you can fix, change, delete, whatever you need to. So it's, it's very user friendly. Uh, same with the website changes. For instance, the other day, this offspring, if you remember a minute ago, this was spelled wrong. All you got to do is come in here. It's not going to fix the email because it already sent it out. But you can come in here to previous posts, and here's one down here. Hey, I need to edit this post. Change a typo, exit, and it will update like immediately. They've they've got it pretty pretty streamlined. Okay, that is my process. Again, there are some links in the description for Beehive. If you use it, uh, you get 20% off three months. I think I'm saying that correctly. I think it's 20% off three months. Click it and find out. Incidentally. Beehive has a very generous free trial. So I was using the free stuff for quite a while. Um, and if I didn't have two newsletters, I'd probably still do the free one uh, because you get a lot. You can post a newsletter. You can have up to Beehive pricing. You can have up to 2,500 subscribers. Yes, you can have a ton of subscribers, a ton of sends, the web hosting. You can't do a domain and then you can't do segments and premium subscriptions, all this stuff. So, and you can't do multiple newsletters. So I, I wanted the multiple, but um, you can check them out if you want Do do free trial, see if they're for you. Use that link if you want to upgrade and, and get a discount on that from me also. If you'd like to see the final steps of the process where I turn the newsletter into a podcast, check this out right now and I'll walk you through my whole process. That's in this video here and I'll see you there.